anything I've seen over this past 15 years. Uh, what you're dealing with now is you know, the quant firms, black boxes are really taking hold of the market. And what they do is they program in into their, into their black boxes, into their computers, historical price action, um, technical analysis, you know, the whole gamut. Essentially what they're trying to do is understand how traders trade the market and create a series of mirages for them intraday to try to capture you know, five cents, a quarter, uh, a dollar, uh, just really to try to take money out of your pocket. You know, when I started trading, you know, you really had the opportunity to, you know, the, say, prop trader or the professional trader had the opportunity to take essentially money from the retail customer. You know, the person who was late with information, uh, they, you know, their trading systems were slow, they weren't really sophisticated. Well, a lot of those people have blown out of the market. And so what's left are really the prop traders, the people who do this for a living. And unfortunately, they're having a really hard time. Uh, you know, I have to go to a number of trading floors and uh, talk to customers. And what you're seeing with the prop traders is that a lot of them are still trading news and rumors and technical analysis on a pure basis and having trouble making money in this market because they don't necessarily understand the evolution that's occurred and that they're essentially trading against well-funded black boxes and algorithmic trading systems. And uh, it's a losing game. You know, so what I want to talk about today is how do you beat the black box? How do you think about the black box? Think like the black box. So by understanding the black box in the sense of how it works, think about a computer programmer, in many cases, who has no trading experience at all. He simply back tests you know, market information, news, historical trading patterns for 10 years to really try to understand how traders think. Uh, so essentially your instincts are programmed into the black box and so when you see a price movement or you see a news event that computer knows what you're going to do and so they take advantage of that you know so one of the you know one of my favorite trades had always been you know buying relative strength into a weak market so for example you know market gaps down and you see, uh, I don't know, Baidu showing relative strength out of the gate. You know, maybe, you know, market's down 2%, Baidu is sitting up 50 cents, 75 cents, and holding up into the market pullback. Now, typically when the market bounces, the names that are showing relative strength would break out and make new highs, and you might see them up another three, four points that day. What you're seeing now is the black boxes are picking off the relative strength names and turning them into relative weakness. So that same Baidu, if it's sitting up there a point and the market's pulling back and then all of a sudden the market starts to run, what you'll see Baidu perhaps do is jump 30, 40 cents and then for the rest of the day go lower, even as the market rallies. And so, you know, one of my favorite trades now is understanding that I can't trade relative strength anymore, especially if it's obvious. I mean, if you just have one or two names that are really sticking out there like a sore thumb as relative strength names, you know that the black boxes are going to come after them. So one of my favorite trades now is letting that stock pop 40, 50 cents and then getting aggressively short and staying short for, you know, either half the day or even the rest of the day. Because even as the market rallies, this stock is being forced lower. If the market turns south, the stock may completely collapse, giving you two, three, four point profit. And one of the interesting things you're seeing is the people who are being successful, you know, you see prop shops, quant shops, um, you know, hedge funds, the ones that I'm finding that are having success are the ones that adopt a multi-strategy approach. You know, people who are just trading news and rumors and technical analysis, you don't see many of those people left. They, you really have to understand the fundamentals of a stock. And the, the issue that you face is that because the algorithmic traders are taking over price action during the day, especially in a sideways moving market, they literally bounce the stock back and forth like a ping pong ball and make you think, oh, this is about to break out. You know, it pops 20, 30 cents through, you know, through the highs and it gets slammed right back. Uh, and they do that type of price action all day. Uh, you know, you get a lot of noise on an intraday basis 
that really makes it hard to read. And I'm finding that if you expand your time frame, you can take advantage of some of these mispricing, over, overshooting action that you see on an intraday time frame. So, for example, you know, uh, you know, Transocean rig has positive news. Stock pops a dollar, and then over the rest of the day, it just, you know, collapses. Maybe it's down three, or four points. This is actually an example I remember uh, recently where. Uh, there was some really positive news out of the, uh, you know, the Gulf spill, and you know, rig popped a couple points right off the bat. Uh, it was good news for them, but then the stock just melted for the rest of the day. Then the next day, it gapped up a little bit, and then kept running for the next several days consecutively. You know, the price action on an intraday basis, it really overshot to the downside, but the fundamentals of the stock were intact, and it's been in an uptrend since. And my point here is that you really need to understand the fundamentals of the stock. And for the first time in my trading history, it's a necessity. I mean, most of the people, I'd say 90% of traders, either trade probably technicals primarily and just kind of general momentum. Uh, you know, stocks, stocks running, it was up big yesterday, looking forward to run some more today, you know, kind of gut fill trading. You know, that doesn't cut it anymore. I mean, you will lose your money trading that way because you can't have a gut feel when, you know, when the computers understand how you trade, they understand price action, and they will shake you out. And, you know, you think, okay, this thing's about to break out. Well, it'll get shaken out lower. Everyone gets flushed, and then it breaks out. You know, so, I mean, it's very difficult to get a sense of, you know, how a stock is going to act, but unless you really have a true understanding of the fundamentals and that you know you want to own it and you're there to buy it into flushes and you anticipate flushes. Um, I'll give you an example of a stock recently that I bought. Actually, I, I closed out the position today on the site. It's a, co a company called, it's a recent IPO called Country Kitchen or Country, Country Cooking, something along those lines. It's a uh, Chinese IPO that, here, and here it is here, I'll open it up, open up the comment. Um, so this is a stock that I bought on Friday, a recent IPO that came out the gate pretty strong, but based on the analysis provided by our IPO team, I was sitting there waiting for a pullback to own this name. And so on the first pullback, uh, I started scaling into the name. So this is something I bought on Friday uh, that, you know, that I sold out today for over six points. Now, there are other Chinese IPOs that sold off and they're still selling off. You know, what makes this one different? Well, based on the analysis provided by our IPO team, I understood that this truly was an IPO that institutions would want to own. Very unique, incredible fundamentals, and that if it sold off, I needed to own it. And this thing, you know, probably will continue to go higher. Uh, but, you know, as a trader, uh, you know, taking six points, you know, so it's, 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 a, it's a big number, so, you, you know, you feel like you need to scale out. You know, I'll, I'll have it on my radar for pullbacks again, but, you know, this is an example of me understanding the fundamentals of a company and sitting there waiting for it to come to me. And, you know, it's very difficult for traders to get their arms around the idea of holding stocks overnight. Uh, you know, the thing I would say is that understand the name, reduce your size, and let some of these things work for you. I mean, I have positions that I've been holding for a year now that literally seem to go up almost every day. I mean, that just march higher. And I'm not really a buy and hold investor. I buy distressed assets when I, you know, when I see the opportunity, extremely distressed. And so that's a lot of the stuff that I own right now. But, you know, one of the things I've been doing recently is trading syndicate because there's so much interest in yield-producing stocks right now that, you know, you might see an agency REIT, say, come to market, uh, you know, might announce a spot secondary. When the stock's trading at 20, you know, the thing price is at 18, you know, deep discount in the hole. Uh, so you're getting a two-point cushion right off the, off the bat, you know, two points below where it traded the day before. And the yields on some of these things are 15 to 20 percent. There's a lot of retail demand for these. So, you know, in these types of deals, instead of flipping them, you know, a lot of times I'm holding them because I know that there's so much retail demand for yield-producing assets that they should continue to go higher. I mean, something that's trading with a 20% yield could 
reasonably trade down to a 15% yield or a 12% yield or even a 10% yield. So and there's a lot of potential capital appreciation, appreciation upside while you're also picking up some yield off of these names. And one of the things I wanted to do is walk you through um, some of the areas on the site to really help you get an understanding of how to find fundamental information. So if you click on this trading ideas tab here, you'll see a menu come up below. And we're going to go to fundam the fundamental area first. So as I said, um, IPOs have really been working well uh, over the past, I'd say probably the past month. And our team has been spot on in identifying uh, these types of names. So what we do with an IPO is you know, we highlight the IPO, provide a, a detailed profile, and we'll actually rate the deal give you our sense of you know, how this thing is going to uh, uh, respond in the aftermarket. And you know, if it's something you might want to, if you can't get in on the actual IPO, if it's something you might want to be looking to buy into pullbacks or um, you know, just you know, when, you, when there's an opportunity to own it, to have it on your radar and be prepared to own it. So this is an example of a profile we've done on an IPO that's coming up, a company called Body Central. You'll see the briefing grade here, B+. Plus. Expected range is 14 to 16. So you know, don't like this. If you know, if our team's rating at a B plus and this thing comes out flat, then I'm immediately interested. If it you know prices at 15 or 16 and opens at 25, you know that's that's another story. But you know, for some someone who has access to IPOs, uh, one of the ways this information helps you is that you know you call your broker and say, hey, I'm hearing about this Body Central deal. Can you get me an allocation? You know, maybe you can, maybe you can. I mean, you typically on a hot deal, you're not going to get a huge allocation. But you know, one of the things we're able to do is find quality deals that aren't that don't necessarily have a lot of buzz, and so that helps you get a, a larger allocation if there's not a lot of buzz associated with the deal. And typically, the buzz comes from it simply being a big name or kind of being in the right place. You know, a Chinese pretty much any Chinese name has buzz because the Chinese stocks have been working. Something like this Body Central, you know, it might not have a lot of buzz associated with it, so you might be able to get a better allocation. Or, you know, if, if you don't have access to shares in the, uh, you know, in terms of IPO allocation, you might have an opportunity to buy this thing, you know, flat or slightly above the offering price if there's a, you know, a general kind of lack of interest. So you'll see we go through and break down the fundamentals of the name. You know, look at the growth drivers, uh, look at the metrics, and break down why we think the you know, the, the stock rates highly. And very rarely do we give a stock an A or a B plus. So if I see something that's in the, you know, B and above range, definitely pay attention. And also if I see something that's in the C or D range, I'm immediately trying to determine if I can find some shares to get short the deal. Uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat, you know, it's risky shorting in general uh, and shorting IPOs even more difficult because it's a lot of times very difficult to find the shares and it's kind of thin. They often get short squeezes. But what happens is like this Tower IPO, this is a big name deal. Actually, a broker just called me and tried to pitch me this deal and I passed on it because our, our rating on this thing was a D. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that you're going to definitely see is that institutions will probably be looking, if this pops aggressively, you will see institutions trying to short this deal, especially if it just goes nuts the first day. Um, so, I mean, that's something that requires a little bit more experience. I wouldn't suggest going out shorting IPOs out the gate, but it's just one strategy that, you know, for someone who's sophisticated who's been around the market, it's one strategy that can work during certain periods of the market if you understand the game and how these deals get pitched and, you know, that a high, you know, something that has a lot of buzz associated with it may not necessarily be a good deal. And, you know, based on our rating, this appears to be a terrible deal. Uh, so I'm going to go back here, and uh, we're going to go into the Emerging Growth Stocks page. In this particular edition, this is the Stocks Under 10 edition, we have two versions of this. Uh, you know, one focuses on stocks under 10, you know, emerging growth, early growth stage names. Another one focuses on stocks over 10. Um, so, you know, in this, you know, if you look at the uh, performance table here, you'll see the types of names we've identified here. I mean, this is, 
you know, from the time we put, them up, put it on the list, here are some of the gains of some of the recent names we've had on the list. This, these just are just this year, and, you know, there are quite a number of them. But there's an opportunity to find the next big growth stock you know, that a lot of people aren't aware of. I mean, th th what this screen does is identify names that are fundamentally and technically strong. So what we're trying to do is find names that hedge funds, you know, smart hedge funds are accumulating and, you know, accumulating quietly. And uh, we try to get out there and understand the fundamentals of them and, uh, you know, get them on, in front of you, in your, on your radar. So if you go through, you'll see some of the metrics that we provide here on these names and uh, you know like this one this company Zag which we added to the list uh, last week for the first time they announced uh, guidance today and I think the stock was up 30 percent just this morning and this is a company that makes uh, uh, protective covers for iPhones and uh, you know and other uh, mobile devices and so you know this is an example of a name that you might not ever come across until after the guidance was issued and the stock gapped up big like it did today. You know, this is a name that we identified last week and actually did a profile on. And, uh, you know, we actually had a couple customers write in today saying, hey, thanks for, for that. You know, I mean, they, you know, our customers actively buy these types of stocks. So if you go into the archive, you'll see the kind of the, the grown-up edition of the emerging growth where we uh, look at, you know, the, the mid-cap to not necessarily large cap, but, you know, stocks that aren't small cap. And so you'll see some of the, you know, the, the performance table here, uh, performance of some of the names here. You know, one thing I'd point out about the emerging growth is that we're seeing a tremendous number of these stocks get acquired. You know, one of the things that you see frequently is stocks that are being accumulated by hedge funds are often the same names that are in play, you know. So that information starts to circulate. Hedge funds start buying these names. They slowly accumulate them in anticipation of a deal happening. And sometimes that's how they come on, onto our radar. And uh, there's been a tremendous number of stocks on the emerging growth this year actually get acquired. Uh, so if you look at, you know, this is uh, some of our rec recommended recent articles. Um, you know, ISLN, I think that one's in play right now or in the process of being acquired. Radware's in play. Uh, that one had about a 12-point spike just a few weeks ago on speculation that that one would be taken over. Uh, you know, one of my re favorite recent articles is the six tech stocks that could be attractive on a pullback. And this actually was a really timely piece because, you know, the market was starting to come, you know, was starting to come pull back some. And one of the patterns we had observed is that, you know, stocks, the really strong, fundamentally strong stocks, um, and they, they put together very nice basing patterns and that, you know, after about two days of pulling back with the market, it quickly raced out to new 52-week highs. And I think every one of these stocks pulled back about 10 to 15 percent and then exploded, I mean, absolutely exploded to new 52-week highs. Uh, here's the Zag I was talking about that actually came out and um, issued earnings guidance today. You click here, you can see the profile of the name that breaks down, um, you know, what the company is all about. Uh, e. And so I have a question here. Uh, can you summarize the links click to get where you are? Well, you know, one of the things that you can do is um, I'm going to click back here. You go to the trading ideas, so you should see this menu up here. You can go to trading ideas and then click the fundamental area. And we group a bunch, uh, several of the strategies together. So the next big thing is the IPO strategy. See that there? Stock ideas is the insider buying strategy. Special reports is the options, both options and FDA events strategy. Industry insight is uh, kind of a, you know, we, we look at, at, at price action in sectors and, you know, money moving from one sector to another and really try to keep you in front of the sector rotation opportunity. Uh, and the merging growth stocks that uh, we just talked about. So one of the things you can do is we have a bookmarking feature here. So if you click on quick links, you can add this page to quick links. So you'll, it'll be easy for you to get to it the next time. 
So if I go back to live in play, live, so I click live market coverage. And I typically run dual in play uh, simply because it allows me to filter the information um, based on what I'm interested in. So on this side of the screen, I'll run everything. I want to know everything that's coming across. And I have this set right now. I have it set to summary. So it'll give you the, the headline and the first sentence. And that you can go to a headline view where it just gives you just the headline, allows you to get more information onto the page. And then you can click the, um, this reading pane. And, well, there's nothing there. Uh, we have a lot of headlines up right now because it's earnings. So let me go down to a story that has more information associated with it. All right, so if you see here, uh, you know, you click the story and get the full story here by using the reading pane and then click the X to close the story. So I personally run this side under the full view so I don't have to click on the reading pane and so I can see everything here. And then on this side, I run it under the headlines view, and I run, I go to my filters, and these are the filters I have selected. Um, you can go to all comments, which is everything you'll see over here, or you can check all comments and it'll uncheck all the boxes. And I run trading calls. If you check the trading calls, it'll show you all of the you know general trading calls, intraday, scalp, and swing. I'm actively involved in rumors, so I have that checked. Um, very interested in technical analysis. Top events is good for me in case I step away from the computer, uh, from the desk for a minute. If there's something that's really market moving, we'll mark it as top events. And I like profiles uh, because there's, you know, our analysts are always coming up with interesting ideas and um, information on stocks that are under the radar. And uh, I like to have as much information as possible about undiscovered, under the radar stocks. So over here, basically anything on the left is what I trade, what I am specifically interested in. On the right, I have everything selected, so I see everything that flows through in play. Now, in the mornings, and I'll just walk you through my process and see if this helps you at all. In the mornings, the first thing I look at is broker research. So I go in and I uncheck the box click broker research, and this will just give me just broker research over the, for the course of the morning. So I can scroll through and just see, see what's going on on the broker research side. I mean, these provide catalysts, um, and, I, and I'm always interested in knowing, you know, the ratings changes because there might be a trading opportunity there. Next thing I'll look at are earnings. And so I'll go check the earnings box, and this will tell me, you know, quickly all the companies that have reported earnings that day. And so instead of going through the news feed where there might be, you know, four, five, six hundred stories, I can focus on the area of interest I have at the moment and quickly get through uh, the earnings or the broker research or uh, the commentary summaries. You know, we have summaries that highlight, uh, you know, what's going on on the economic front, uh, overseas markets, sector summaries, really keeping you informed on uh, what's going on in the market. Uh, you know, paying attention to the bond market is, is important these days as well. Um, I always like to know what's going on, on the economic front. We have a, an economist here that breaks down all the economic data, help help you understand um, the moving parts of the data, um, and you know, number of summaries so that you know when you wake up in the morning, there will be something here to help you understand what happened overnight, what's going on in the morning. You see the Asian summary here, um, the event trader day ahead comment focuses on overseas action and any major economic data or, you know, um, government, governmental events that you should be paying attention to that may have, you know, major impact on underlying equities. Uh, here's, you know, Asian summary, European summary, insider buying summary, uh, you know, early bond market summary. So, you know, quite a bit going on here, and uh, you know, I just wanted to quickly walk you through. One, you know, one more thing I wanted to show you is that for those of you who are short of screen space, you can select this fly out here, and it'll pop open for you. And it might have popped open off the screen. You might not be able to see it, but you can reduce the size of this and, you know, put it up at the top of your screen so that you don't have to worry about using a full monitor to run uh, in play. 
And so you can, you know, select a filter whether you want to have, well, sorry, have select display whether you want to have it as a headline, summary, or full. And I would suggest probably a headline view. Then you can click on the reading pane to see the details. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of times people have problems finding that, it's, and it's a very useful feature. All right, so I am going to open this up for questions. Uh, so just give me a second here. Everybody, hope you're enjoying the webinar. What we're going to do now is unmute everybody um, in order to facilitate questions. Um, we try to take one question at a time, so um, let's just try it this way and see how it goes. Uh, the chat box, I don't think it's working out that great because I only have one question typed in there, but if you do want to type a question in the chat box, go ahead. Um, so I'm going to unmute everybody now, and uh, whoever has a question, just jump in. Unmuted. All right, so you guys, the line is open, so if you have any questions, shoot. Any, any questions at all? Not sure my mic is working. No, we can hear you. Okay. Um, you were talking about the black box uh, uh, traders, the high frequency traders. How do you, what do you see um, when you're looking at charts or the uh, uh, level two screen to um, to see that the, that the black box traders are in? Um, well, you know, I'd say six months ago you could see their volume. You could see their volume footprint. Uh, where they come in and try to essentially muscle a stock higher or lower, but I, it seems like they're actually disguising that a little bit better. Um, I'd pretty much say that anything that that a lot of day traders are involved in, the black boxes are in. I mean, essentially they're looking to take money out of the say the prop traders' pockets. So anything you know, the Netflixes, the Apples, the Goldmans, I mean, anything that's showing a lot of volatility, that's a mover, that you know has a good price range that momentum traders are involved in, you should assume that the black boxes are in there. I need it. Okay. And um, so you're, you're just looking for uh, quick uh, quick movements of the stock in, in with volume? Well, and, you know, I don't even necessarily say that it, it's hard to see their volume footprint now. You could six months ago, but they're covering their tracks better now. So I, w I would honestly say anything that's a market leader that has good volatility, you should assume the black boxes are there. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, by, you know, using some of our strategies such as the emerging growth and as well as the uh, next big thing IPOs, you don't find the black boxes there because they don't know about them yet. And, you know, you don't, the, because momentum traders don't often know about them yet. You know, these names are – typically quietly being accumulated by hedge funds, and they don't get on the radar until so they break out to a 52-week high or they come out with earnings guidance or something like that. But a lot of times, by the time some type of major news event has happened, I mean, these stocks have already run 70, 80, 90 percent. So you can sneak into these names while they're being accumulated and before the black boxes have a chance to even recognize that, you know, these names are in play. Because, you know, they, they don't, what they don't want to do is come against institutional accumulation. They don't want to co go against someone that has as much money as they do. You know, they, they want to, want to trade against trade traders trade who are, you know, trading $50,000 positions <laughs> and will blow out of a stock on a 20 cent move. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next okay, question the next I see is uh, what charting service do you use? Uh, most of our, our people here use eSignal. Okay, I'm li looking at the next question. Are you targeting any return or time or industry profile for your trades? Uh, you know, I like to move around. I mean, I take a multi-strategy approach. So on some days, whenever I see an opportunity, that's what I'm trading. So on some days, I'm trading syndicate. Uh, you know, recently there was a... Uh, uh, a secondary, spot secondary that came out that I didn't have access to, but I saw that it opened flat with the offering price. So this thing priced $2 in the hole and opened the next morning flat at the offering price. And I put out a comment saying, hey, 
this thing's yielding 20%, and you're getting it $2 in the hole. You know, intraday, that stock rallied a dollar, and it's run another dollar since then. So I mean, two-point move over a week and a half on something that's yielding 20%. You know, so something like that, I feel comfortable taking five then because there is an underlying value. I know there's an underlying bid because the strong interest in yielding, you know, and stocks that have some type of yield. Um, so, you know, there's certain situations I'll put more money, a lot more money into a name based on, you know, my sense of the value of it. And so you see that a lot with, you know, stocks that have high dividend yields. You can do kind of a relative value comparison to see just kind of where the value stacks up versus other things that are in the market. I do that a lot in the preferred market as well. Um, you know, but, you know, this morning I was trading AOL. You know, the Yahoo News came out. I posted this, this trade on the site. Um, you know, the Yahoo News came out um, that AOL might be putting together a bid for Yahoo. And uh, my first thought really was, okay, well, you know, the, the talk is that AOL might not be able to afford Yahoo. So that might fall apart. But the fact that AOL is teaming up, with uh, private equity to possibly try to put the bid, a bid together, well, if this thing fails, maybe AOL gets taken out. You know, and so I, I highlighted the idea of buying AOL today, and that ran a dollar, you know, on a twenty-dollar stock, which was uh, which was pretty nice. Uh, you know, I was trading some of the uh, education stocks today, and uh, on that, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I closed out today was that Country Stock Kitchen. Um, you know, for six and a half points. So, you know, there's there's plenty of opportunity on a daily basis, but, you know, there's also opportunity on a swing basis. And if you understand fundamentals, you will have an edge over 90% of the traders out there. And, you know, I talk to traders all the time. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to understand fundamentals because they've never done it before. And, you know, I see these guys blowing up left and right because they're still trying to trade technicals. Technicals can be programmed into a black box. You know, these guys are trying to buy into 200-day moving averages. Well, you know, to be honest, you know, I, I probably say I was, over the past 10 years, I'd say I probably 60% technical, 40% fundamentals. I'm at the point now where I'm taking all of my, fund, my technical scans off of my charts because I see the traps. I know if something's coming into the 200-day moving average, there's a trap there. I don't want to be involved. You know, maybe I'll look for... Uh, a price flush where I know people have been trying to buy it into a moving average or into a, a round number. And uh, if I see a price flush, volume spike, then I become interested. But I'm not going to buy something into the 200-day moving average because every black box in the country has that. They, they know that momentum traders, technical traders, are going to come in and try to buy this thing. And they, they've been doing that for 50 years. So anything that's been done consistently, uh, you shouldn't be doing it anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you using any equity inverse leverage or bond ETFs? You know, our traders put out calls using a lot of ETFs. Uh, BGU is a popular one. Um, trying to think, SPXU is a popular one, and you know, a lot of times you can short these or, or trade the inverse. And a lot of times our guys will, you know, depending on, on your broker situation, I mean, some brokers charge per share, so if you're trading size, you want to, you know, you want to trade an, an ETF that has a higher dollar volume value versus one that has, you know, a much lower dollar value, you have to buy more shares and you're getting charged more commission. So one of the things our guys will frequently do is, you know, an ETF is, you know, a lot of times you'll see these ETFs that, you know, the you know, one's trading at, you know, 100 bucks, and then the inverse is trading at $20. Well, instead of, you know, when they want to get short the market, instead of buying the inverse at $20, you know, they'll short the primary name, the one that's trading at $100. So, um, you know, and stay away from the, the lower price stock. You know, if you're you know if you're trading with flat commissions, a flat commission rate, and that's not an issue. But you know, a lot of traders trade with uh, you know based on the number of shares they buy. Trade with firms that you know the commissions are based on the number of shares. So that's something you should take into account and uh, also understand that 
you know, if your brokerage firm doesn't have good borrows, then, you know, you, it might be an issue. I mean, you could save yourself a lot of money by being able to, to short an ETF instead of buying the inverse. I mean, especially, you see a lot of times the inverse is trading at a tenth of the price of the, you know, the primary uh, ETF. All right, I'm looking to see if there are any more questions. All right, uh, any other questions? Uh, just open up the line again here. Okay, last question. I promise any option strategies, overlays, or directional moves. We do have an options page here under that trading ideas area, trading ideas, fundamental. And, I, you know, I find it to be, you know, exceptional. Uh, on this page is our volatility event tracker. So what we do is we look at FDA events. And, you know, with these FDA events, there are situations where stock may go up 100, 200, 300 percent or fall 80 percent. And so what we try to do is let you know about the event, provide the fundamental information associated with the event. So, you know, we have relationships with over 80 brokers who send us their research notes. And so what we do is we look to see kind of what the sentiment is uh, going into the event and help you understand that. And then we'll put together an option strategy that we think best, you know, most benefits from that event. So oftentimes it's not buying a straight call. Maybe, maybe it's buying a covered call. Uh, maybe it's, you know, another strategy. And so we look at, you know, how expensive uh, you know, look at the vol of a particular name and tell you, hey, you know, we wouldn't buy a call, we wouldn't buy a put, here's a strategy that we would implement. So we look at some of the recent trades. Uh, this was a, a call spread on SBNT, uh, or we took initial profits to 60%, now it's up 86%. Uh, OREX call spread, 25% uh, profit, uh, and, you know, you don't always win. ALXA call spread, sell 80%. Uh, if you look at the MNTA, that one was up as much as 165%. The ARNA was up uh, 305%. You know, so with options, obviously, you know, you're not putting on as large a position, um, but, you know, the upside potential can be, can be tremendous. Uh, so if you go through, you'll see all of the different events that are upcoming, our commentary on them, and you can click through and actually see the preview of the event. And we'll update those, these as they come along. And even for, you know, people who aren't trading options, by understanding what the expectations are in the market, it gives you an edge in trading the stock. So if I know that, you know, going into an event that uh, uh, Cumberland Pharma, if I know that all the analysts, you know, assume that this drug is going to be approved, and they've essentially priced it in and the stocks run, well, when the news comes out, the stock pops 30%. I'm there getting short, you know, into the price spike because most traders, 98% of the traders have no idea that this news was coming. They see it across the wire. They think, oh, wow, this is great. You know, this is a drug that treats cancer. This stock's going to go up 150% and not even take the time to look at the chart and realize that it's been up 150% over the past six weeks into the event. So, that, I mean, that's an opportunity to pick off a name. And, you know, a lot of times you'll see something pop 30% um, almost all the way back to the flat line. You know, I mean, and, you know, if you're prepared for it, you can take advantage of this. So this is why, you know, one of the reasons why understanding the fundamentals, having that knowledge really helps. And, uh, you know, so we also do, uh, in the options area, we will preview um, companies that are reporting earnings. So we'll show you options volatility ahead of an earnings event, kind of show you what, you know, what's showing heightened options volatility or uh, implied volatility into the event. So you see like this GCI, uh, you know, it's 117% above normal. APOL, 104% above normal. And, you know, they guided down last night. I think the stock was down 20% or so today. So, you know, this is a, a good read into what expectations are, because a lot of times there's information that's out there in the market uh, that most people don't know about. You know, maybe there's, you know, someone, an analyst who did channel checks on APOL 
call up clients and say, hey, guys, you know, you know, there's something wrong here. You know, based on conversations we've been having uh, in our channels, uh, you know, these guys, are, their growth is really slowing down. I mean, they don't come out and necessarily downgrade the stock, but they'll pitch that information to the client, and what those people will do is will often buy options into the event, you know, because you can, you know, maybe make three, four, five, six hundred percent on that event versus, you know, being short and making 20 or 30 percent. Okay, so it looks like um, there are no more questions in the chat. Uh, any more questions over the line? And uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple minutes to post any more questions in the chat if you have uh, anything else you'd like to hear about. So any advice to an intraday short trader as far as using the website for timely information? Uh, yeah, I do have some advice. Uh, you know, my first advice is uh, back away from the speed game. Uh, you know, with, with these black boxes and high frequency traders, they have feeds to the news services. They essentially get all press releases first. I mean, they pay a premium to have a faster feed. You know, they you know, they set their boxes up right next to the computers of the press release agencies. They pay a premium to have the feed fed to them before you get it. So even, you know, if you have a, you know, whatever service that provides press releases, you're not getting it first. You're not being the box to that. So you should assume that anything other than a rumor or something of that nature or, you know, like on our site, we provide analysis, you know, so company comes down and issues an earnings warning, we're going to tell you the, you know, two or three names you should be trading. You know, company comes out and gets acquired, we're going to tell you the names that are most like that company that should, you know, should benefit. So, you know, from that standpoint, these guys aren't going to have an edge on you. But if it's a straight news event, you know, press release that this company got FDA approval, that's, you know, that's going to be a tough game to try to beat, you know, hundreds of black boxes into that stock. I mean, they're going to, they've probably traded it 20 times by the time you've been put your quarter together and get it filled. Um, so what I've been, where I've been having success is trading the secondary reaction, waiting to see what happens initially and thinking about how most traders would trade that. So if it's a news event where I see, okay, this sounds like it should be important and, you know, Momentum traders and news traders are probably going to be jumping on it. Well, if it spikes, say, I know, fifteen dollars stock, that spikes a dollar fifty quickly, I'm going to be looking to short into that pop because I know that's what the black boxes are doing. They've already, they're already in the stock. They're going to be taking profits into that initial spike and then shorting it and trying to blow, bring it back down. So I'm going to be looking to trade like them. I'm going to be looking to short a pop ride it down 50 cents, 75 cents, cover, and then maybe consider flipping back long. So, I mean, the opportunity is on the secondary reaction. You're not going to beat these guys on the primary reaction. Uh, so the next question is, uh, where are earnings warnings found? The earnings warnings are classified under the earnings. So if you click earnings here, go into the filter, and I'll show you how I did that again. Select the filter then I have all comments on. I'll double-click that and then go back to earnings and open it up. And so I'll see all the companies that are reporting earnings here. Uh, and if there's an earnings warning in there, so you'll see, well, that it'll say in the headline if there is an actual warning. Uh, but we do have an earnings warning calendar. So if you go to um, all calendars and then click on guidance, you'll see where companies issue guidance. So over here, you'll see, you can see with the, with the red arrow, this company guided below consensus. So their guidance was 580 to 620 million, and the consensus was 651 million. So with this company here, you'll see that the arrow is green, pointing up, so their guidance was above consensus, 7.09 to 7.16 billion which was above the 7.07 .07 billion consensus. Uh, here's the zag that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this company, which we put on our emerging growth list last week, their guidance today was above 22 million versus the 14.64 million consensus. And again, uh, if you have trouble navigating the site, if you're new, 
you can always bookmark these items. So I can add this page to Quick Links. So you've successfully added this page. And uh, I can go back and click on it, and it'll you know, take me there. I'm already there. So, but you know, if I go back to that fundamental area, you'll see it takes me right back to uh, that area where we're looking at the different strategies. All right. All right. Well, if there are, not, if there are no more questions, I'm going to uh, wrap this up. I'll give you just a second to ask any more, either over the phone or through the chat. Alerts, please. Um, so this customer would like to know how to set up alerts. Well, you know, one thing that I want to make sure you're aware of is that you can create your own uh, custom filters. So here, and this is a filter that's already set up. I can go in, and this is a filter just for Apple information. And so I'll check everything here. And so what this will do is only give me information that's associated with Apple. And you can add, either do this by industry or ticker. So you can plug in, you know, 50 tickers or more and just, you know, have a portfolio and information just on stocks in your portfolio. Or you can do an industry. Um, so I'm going to uncheck this, go back to the main screen. Uh, I can go into the alerts area here and then create edit alerts. And I can either do ticker or sector and industry. So let's do ticker here. Now I'll plug in a few tickers. So Google. Uh, say Monsanto, Lamb Research. All right, so let's go with these three for now. Go to Next. I see the ticker list. Go to Next. Uh, then I decide if I want a visual alert, which will give me an alert on the website when, whenever one of these uh, tickers is triggered, an audio alert or an email alert. So we'll go visual and audio. I'll we'll keep email on as well. So we'll go next. Rename the alerts. So I'll just call it test. Test. And uh, save it. Let's see. Why can't this alert? Oh, I need more characters. Is that what he's asking? Okay. Let's see if that'll take care of it. Okay, and so now that I have these alerts set, I'll automatically, with any of the, well, these are some alerts that were set previously, I'll, I'll automatically receive alerts when something comes across on any of these stocks. So if I go back to the in play page, the visual alert, a little box will pop up here around this area with the ticker in it alerting you to the uh, to the fact that the alert's been triggered and uh, this will also this is also an indication that an alert's been triggered and you would receive an email as well as an audio alert if that's something you select. Now one of the things you can do is you can go into uh, the alerts area to view your alerts and it will list out all of the alerts that have been triggered for the day or actually goes back how many on, uh, uh, it'll show the most 100 recent alerts that have triggered, so it's on a first-in, first-out basis. So uh, once you reach that 100 level, it'll start uh, dismissing the alerts at the bottom of the page, and you'll get the newest ones at the top. So, and this will adjust based on any changes that you make to your alert. So if you remove a particular ticker from a given alert on a day, uh, that ticker will no longer be displayed on the all alerts page. But this is a good way to, to catch up. Like if you go away for lunch and you want to catch up on the, all the alerts that came out, uh, while you're at lunch, you just visit this page and you can see it all quickly. All right, so we'll go back to uh, live in play, dual in play. All right, so um, let's see. To do this, why not continue on talking? <laughs> the website, your market thoughts, etc. Um, you know, I can. Uh, you know, I'll have a lot to say, but. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, bore people with uh, my long-winded answers to things. 
Um, you know, I just say, I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a very interesting time to, you know, to be getting into this market. I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, if you understand what's going on, and I think we provide a lot of value in helping you find ideas and analyze those ideas. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, recently I was trading uh, networking infrastructure stocks. There's been a lot of volatility in that space lately, and where I had an edge is I understood the moving parts. I knew the suppliers, uh, you know, the customers of some of the companies that they were being down downgraded by analysts or issue, issuing warnings or, you know, the rumors out that this company lost the customer, that type of thing. By knowing the moving parts, knowing the food chain, you are given frequent opportunity to pick off a stock. Say, for example, you know, a company comes out, you know, and, and there's a, a rumor out that they lost a customer or that their business is slowing. Well, because most people aren't versed on the fundamentals of these names, they don't know the secondary plays. And so you can actually have a stock, that, you know, a primary name that's getting hit four or five points on a rumor or a downgrade, uh, something along those lines, and have a secondary play, a supplier, sitting right there in the green while the primary stock's down five points. And, you know, once that information starts to circulate, that secondary play will often fall apart. I mean, you'll see it down two, three, four points after you know the first 30 minutes of trading just sitting there. And you're like, wow, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I, you know, is, is there something wrong with this story? But you, know, you start shorting and hitting it and chopping the legs from under it, then it gives way and the people start to really connect the dots. So uh, really understanding the fundamentals and the moving parts will give you an edge always in trading this market. And I'd have to say that to some degree, you know, technicals are a uh, you know, are a hindrance to trading this market, um, and a lot of people who've been trading for a long time are having a lot of difficulty because they're focused on what they've always done, and that's now been programmed into the black boxes. They know what you're going to do before you do because they've seen the action. I mean, it's nothing emotional. Your gut is you know been kind of programmed over your you know instinctual reaction to things over years and years and years of trading. So, I mean, that is programmed into the black box. They look at 10 years of historical data to understand what you're going to do in a given event. All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. We really appreciate uh, you listening to this webinar. And, um, you know, we, uh, if you have any questions for me, you can send me an email. My email is southward at briefing.com and that's D and southward as if you're going in that direction S-O-U-T-H-W-A-R-D or you can speak to your sales representative um, and send them an email and they can forward it to me uh, but hope this has been informative and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks everybody. I just wanted to pass one piece of information. If you did enjoy this and uh, you'd like to see us do more of these things just let your salesperson know or Reach out to us via our feedback form that you see all over the site. Just let us know that you, know, you really, really appreciated this and that you'd like to see more, and uh, we'll plan to do that. So once again, thanks again for joining us, and have a great night.